Good morning, everyone. I, Dr. Richa, Professor Maharaja Agassin University School of Law, would discuss state emergency today with you. What is the meaning of state emergency? The president rule, which is uh, the other name of the state emergency, is the suspension of state government and imposition of direct central government rule in the state under Article 356 of the Constitution of India in the event where the state government is unable to function according to the constitutional provisions, the central government takes the direct control over the state machinery. In result of it, the executive authority is exercised through the centrally appointed governor who has the authority to appoint the other administrators to assist him. If we talk about the duty of the union, Article 355 very clearly states that it shall be the duty of the union to protect every state against external aggression as well as internal disturbance and to ensure that the government of the every state is carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. Now, where is the need? Why it is uh, desired to impose the president rule in uh, the state? It is being clearly defined under Article 356. There are certain situations which, uh, which uh, prescribe that they, uh, we need to impose the president rule in the state. So as it is evident from Article 356 that there are four conditions which requires to be fulfilled before imposing the president rule. And what are those? Number one, failure of the constitutional machinery in the state. Number two, when a report is being sent from the governor of the concerned state to the uh, president for imposition of the president rule. Third stage is where the satisfaction of the president uh, about the existence of the situation which stipulates the requirement of imposition of the president rule. After these th three stages, the fourth stage comes where there is the proclamation of the emergency by the president. Now we will discuss in detail about the four conditions. Number one condition is the failure of the constitutional machinery in the state. Article 356 of the uh, Constitution of India gives the president of India the power to impose this rule on a state on the ground of the failure of the constitutional machinery. Now, when we may say that there is a failure of the constitutional machinery, number one, if the president is satisfied that a situation has arisen in which the government of the state cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. Second is, The state government is unable to elect a leader as the chief minister within a stipulated time as it is to be prescribed done by the governor of that state. Number third situation is there is a breakdown of the collision leading to the chief minister. When there is whenever there is a collision government, it is always a responsibility uh, to maintain that collision. And in case there is a breakdown of that collision, then there will be constitutional crisis in the state. Next is loss of the majority in the assembly due to the vote of no confidence motion. Sometimes uh, in recent times also we have seen this kind of situation in many states. So whenever there is an issue about the no confidence and the uh, uh, ruling party loses its confidence, then there is obviously a constitutional crisis in the state. Next is the election is postponed on account of the situations like the natural disasters, war, pandemic, or maybe some kind of internal disturbance in the state. So these are the situation where there comes the, uh, uh, where there comes the situation when the constitutional crisis arises in the state. Second is, Keeping those constitutional crises in the mind, the report is being prepared by the governor and that is to be forwarded further. 
Article 356 talks about the uh, that if the president on the receipt of the report from the government of a state or otherwise that aid and advice of the Council of Minister as defined under Article 74 Clause 1, uh, it is being declared in SR Bombay versus Union of India that the president is satisfied that a situation has arisen in which the government of the state cannot be carried on by the provisions of the constitution. The president may issue a proclamation in regard to the emergency in that particular state. Now, a report is being sent. Now, there comes the situation when the satisfaction of the president is becomes of importance. Now, the proclamation of the emergency under Article 356 is dependent on the satisfaction of the president. With regard to the existence of the relevant conditions which have been uh, mentioned to the president in the report, the conditions precedent to the issuance of the proclamation are number one, that the president should be satisfied either on the basis of the report of the governor of the state or otherwise. Second is that in fact a situation has arisen in which the government of the state cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. So, in other words, the president's satisfaction is of prime importance that is basing on the objective materials being sent to the president. So, that material could be anything or may be available in the form of the reports that is sent to the governor uh, from the governor or otherwise from any other sources that like we have discussed the article 74. So, if the president is satisfied Basing on these materials, it is not about that it is the personal wishes, it is the whims and fancies of the president that would uh, pay way for the proclamation of the state emergency, but that satisfaction must base on some kind of um, objective material before the president. So, the president by a legitimate inference drawn from that material which has been presented to the president, he will proclaim the emergency he or she will proclaim the emergency now there comes the last point the proclamation of the emergency on the imposition of the uh, emergency under article 356 on the grounds of the breakdown of the constitutional machinery what will happen number one the president can assume the powers of the state government or any other executive authority in the state second can take all other necessary steps including the suspension of the constitutional provisions relating to the anybody or uh, authority in the state. Ne third point is the president can either suspend or dissolve the state legislative assembly. During the state emergency, the president passes the state legislative bills or the state budget. However, the president cannot assume to himself or herself the powers vested in the concerned state high court or suspend the provisions of the constitution relating to it. It is all about the state's constitutional machinery, about the legislative and executive. Le judiciary is independent of that. The president will not interfere. The president cannot even uh, take over the control over the judiciary. It is it was earlier independent. It is independent and in the coming times it will remain independent. So it is the legislative and the executive function that is to be taken over by the president by the proclamation of this state emergency. Now what will be the duration of the presidential rule in the state? Article 356 clause 2 states that any such proclamation may be revoked or varied by the subsequent proclamation. Okay, first proclamation is to be done uh, to is made to pronounce to uh, to proclaim the emergency and subsequently whenever it is to be withdrawn the another proclamation will take place. So Article 356 clause 3 says that the proclamation ceases to operate at the expiration of the two months unless before the expiration of that period it has been approved by uh, making the resolution by both the houses of the parliament initially without parliament's approval it will run for two months and what is the proviso it is issued at a time when the house of people is dissolved okay or the dissolution that is lok sabha the House of People is dissolved. Lok Sabha 
is to is subject to dissolution but rajya sabha is a continuous house or the dissolution of the house of the people takes place during the period of those two months which has been referred in the uh, clause mentioned above and if a resolution approving the proclamation has been passed by the council of states that is the rajya sabha but no resolution with respect to such proclamation has been passed by the lok sabha before the expiration of that period that is 2 months the proclamation shall cease to operate at the expiration of the 30 days from the date on which the house of people first sits after its reconstitution so initially without the uh, resolution being passed in parliament the duration of the emergency would be 2 months okay suppose there is a situation that a uh, lok sabha is dissolved but rajya sabha is still going on the council of state is still going on and they have passed a resolution and meantime the lok sabha is dissolved then it will ceases to operate whenever the new lok sabha constitutes within a time frame of 30 days okay so 30 days ke andar it has to be either approved or it will dissolve now article 356 clause 4 says a proclamation so approved shall unless revoked ceases to operate on the expiration of the 6 months from the date of issue of the proclamation after the approval the tenure is well, the initial tenure is of 6 months if it is not renewed it will expire after the uh, duration of the 6 months if you want to renew it you have to again pass a resolution in both the houses it will give a life of 6 months extension of 6 months okay now again there is a proviso provided that if and so often as a resolution approving the continuance in force of such a proclamation is passed by both the houses of the parliament the proclamation shall revoke or continue in force for a further period of 6 months from the date on which under this clause it would otherwise have ceased to operate but no such proclamation shall in any case remain in force more than 3 years if there is a repetition also then it will go maximum up to 3 years okay so now next is exercise of the legislative powers under proclamation issued under article 356 357 whenever there is the proclamation of emergency there are further consequences of it on the legislature also on the executive also or on the people of the that particular state also so article 356 clause 1 says whereby a proclamation issued under clause 1 of article 356 it has been declared that the powers of the legislature of the state shall be exercisable by or under the authority of parliament so it shall be competent for what to legislate now here the uh, uh, distinguishment on the basis of the union list on the basis of state list and the concurrent list it will get blurred because the state control is being taken over by the parliament now now for parliament to confer on the president the power to legislature of the state to make laws and to authorize the president to delegate subject to such conditions as president may think fit to impose the power so conferred to any other authority be specified by president in that behalf now president can confer the power of legislature uh, relating to that state to the concerned person to whom he or she would find suitable for parliament second clause for parliament for the president or other authority in whom such power to make laws is vested under sub clause a to make laws conferring powers and imposing duties or authorizing or conferring the powers and the imposition of the duties upon the union and the officers and the authorities thereof so there would be further delegation of the authorities between uh, regarding the legislative and the executive work the president to authorize when the house of people is not in session whatever what is to take place how the things will go when the house of people uh, is not in session the expenditures from the consolidated fund of the state pending on the sanction of such expenditure by the 
पार्लियामेंट सो छोटी से छोटी बात और बड़ी से बड़ी बात एवरीथिंग विल बी टेकन कंट्रोल बाय द प्रेसिडेंट एंड प्रेसिडेंट वुड अपॉइंट द पर्सन फिट टू द जॉब we all we know that it is not the president who directly rule president al always acts on the aid and advice of the council of minister so it is not the president who is directly ruling in the name of president it is the uh, central government it is the um, ruling party which is which has taken control over the state so any law made in exercise of the power of the legislature of the state by parliament or the president or other authority referred to in clause 1 sub clause a which the parliament or the president or such authority would not but for the issue of the proclamation of article 356 have been competent to make shall after the proclamation has ceased to operate after the uh, or continue in force until altered repeal or amended by the competent legislature or the other authority so it will remain the uh, organization the functionaries will work in accordance uh, the arrangement made by the president till the emergency goes on so what are the power of the parliament to legislate with respect to the any matter referred in the state list if a proclamation of emergency is in operation article 256 talks about that not withstanding anything in this chapter the parliament shall while a proclamation of emergency is in operation have the power to make laws for the whole or any part of the territory of india with respect to goods and services tax provided under article 246a or any other matter enumerated in the state list clear second a law made by parliament which parliament would not but for the issue of the proclamation of emergency have been competent to make shall to the extent of the incompetency ceases to have effect on the expiration of a period of 6 months after the proclamation has ceased to operate okay now here comes very important point suspension of the provisions of article 19 we know article 19 talks about our fundamental right so during emergency what will be the effect while a proclamation of emergency declaring that the security of india or any part of the territory thereof is threatened by war by external aggression is in operation then nothing in article 19 shall restrict the power of the state as defined by part 3 that is fundamental rights to make any law or to take away uh, take any executive action which the state would but for the provisions contained in that part be competent to make or to take but any law so made shall to the extent of the incompetency ceases to have effect as soon as the proclamation ceases to operate except as respect things done or omitted to be done before the law so ceases to have the effect now what is the proviso provided that where such proclamation of emergency is in operation only in any part of the territory of india any such law may be made or any such executive action may be taken under this article in relation to or any in any state or union territory in which or in any part of which the proclamation of emergency is not in operation if and in so far as the security of india or any part of the territory thereof is threatened by the activities in or in relation to the part of the territory of india in which the proclamation of emergency is in operation so now uh, where a proclamation of emergency is in operation the president may by order declare that the right to move any court for the enforcement of such of the rights that is fundamental rights except article 20 and 21 as may be mentioned in the order and all proceedings pending in any court for the enforcement of the rights so mentioned shall remain suspended during which the proclamation is in force and uh, for or for such shorter period as may be specified in the order jitna bhi time period ke liye emergency impose hui hai okay so an order made as a force it may extend to the whole or any part of the territory of india provided that where a proclamation of emergency is in operation only in only in a part of the territory of india 
any such order shall not extend to any other part of the territory of india jis jitne area mein emergency impose hui hai the restriction will be confined only to that area not beyond that okay so every order made under clause 1 shall as soon as maybe after it is made be laid before each house of parliament at every point it is the consent of the parliament that matters a lot now what is what are the judicial interpretations relating to the state emergency by and large we have seen so many cases under various circumstances when we find that the state emergency has been imposed in almost all the states have experienced this emergency what is the take of judiciary on that we'll start with state of rajasthan with the versus union of india that led to the first important very judgment relating to the state emergency in rajasthan the court flatly rejected the contention that ascertaining whether article 356 ought to be invoked was a non justiciable political question the court was entitled to investigate with justice bhagwati declared whether the limit on the power conferred by the constitution have been observed or there is transgression of such limits on the purpose of article 356 with respect to the article 356 the relevant limit was that the president had to be satisfied that a situation has arisen where the government of the state cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution where in this very case justice bhagwati explained the satisfaction of the president is a subjective one and cannot be tested by the references by any objective test so it is deliberately and advisedly subjective because the matter in respect to which he is to be satisfied is of such a nature that its decision must necessarily be left to the executive branch of the government there may be a wide range of situations which may arise and their political implications and consequences may have to be evaluated in order to decide whether the situation is such that the government of the state cannot be carried on in accordance with the provisions of the constitution so an explanation again uh, another explanation came from chief justice beg who emphasized on the problem of the subjectivity the subjectivity uh, of the matter being presented before the president what is the constitutional machinery whose failure or imminent failure the president can deal with under article 356 this is of immense importance to understand is it enough if a situation has arisen in which one or more provisions of the constitution cannot be observed now what provisions of the constitution which are not being observed in the state or to what extent they cannot be observed are the matter on which great differences of opinions are possible political result in 1980s in that tenure there were so much fluctuations and that came one and uh, one after another in a series now following rajasthan government dismissal the janta party proceeded to dismiss the nine congress led state government during 1977 to 1980 during a, such a short span of 3 years there were nine dismissals okay upon its return to power in 1980 now the congress settled their score by dismissing nine janta led state governments so these depressing events contributed to the establishment uh, of the uh, sincerely required commission in 1983 the commission sarkariya commission was established which was tasked with reviewing the center state relations now the union government did not formally accepted the sarkariya commission's report not surprisingly uh, the controversies over the use of article 356 then continued eventually that prompted a second prominent case that is very relevant and very prominent case for the student of uh, the constitution that is sr bombay versus union of india air 1994 supreme court 1918 now this case had its genesis in the decision of the congress led union government to impose president rule in the six states 
in half these cases article 356 was invoked without allowing the rival political parties to prove that they had the support of the legislature in the other half the rest three the state governments led by bhartiya janata party had been dismissed in the wake of the communal violence that stemmed from the destruction of babri masjid following the mixed verdicts in the relevant high courts the cases were brought before the supreme court which was asked to clarify the constitutional position now in the bombay case court followed the rajasthan court uh, in emphasizing that uh, the court was entitled to review the exercise of article 356 where the justices differed was on the question of justifiability justice am ahmadi justice j s verma justice yogeshwar dayal and justice k ramaswamy voiced a preference for the minimal standard established by the rajasthan high court as justice verma opined that it would appear that situations wherein the failure of the constitutional machinery has to be inferred subjectively from a variety of facts and circumstances including some imponderable and inferences leading to a subjective political decision judicial scrutiny of the same is not permissible for the want of the judicially manageable standards so these political decisions call for the judicial hands off envisaging the corrections only by a subsequent electoral verdict unless corrected earlier in the parliament so the justices also emphasize that should it be prima facie appearing that article 356 had been invoked in bad faith the court would be entitled to demand the production of the material that had served as the basis for the president's decision to impose the emergency justice savant put the point most bluntly warning the union that it did not enjoy a blanket privilege against disclosing such uh, evidences because although article 74 clause 2 bars the judicial review so far as the advice that is relating to the advice of the council of ministers as the advice given by the ministers is concerned it does not bar the scrutiny of the material on the basis of which the advice is given the courts are not interested in either the advice given by the ministers to the president or the reasons for the such kind of advice the courts are however justified in probing as to whether there are any materials on the basis of which the advice was given and whether it was relevant for such kind of advice and the president could have acted on it now applying the above standard the bombay in the bombay case the court declared it unconstitutional that the imposition of the president rule in the states where the political formation had not been allowed to test their strength on the floor of the house by the state legislature in these cases the union had failed to show that the states cannot be carried on in accordance with the constitutional mandate in constitutional parameters so to the contrary the undue haste has been shown by the union in invoking article 356 clearly smacks the malefactor so state emergency of course is a uh, is a provision which is to be invoked in the uh, dire circumstances when we actually find out that there is the failure of the state machinery but who is going to put the report how that report is being presented how the advice is being conferred to the president how the president perceives that how the president decides that that cannot be a subject of scrutiny by the judiciary so it is a question of the prudence to be exercised very prudently by the state by the union by the governor by the council of ministers by the union government only on the uh, critical analysis on the uh, analytical basis the president is supposed to proclaim the emergency so this has been the topic for uh, today's lecture i hope it will help you to some extent thank you so much thank you everyone